Hello, guys. How are you? Can you hear me? I think we can for your information the session is recorded. No worries, Joel. I will upload the substructure lecture to the to the Zoom recording soon. Okay, just Banotop will prepare the recording and I will post it. Okay, can you hear me well now, guys? Can you see my screen as well? Okay, thank you. So now we will work on the week three tutorial, the load calculations example. And we will calculate the dead load and life load on balance. In uh, week two, we have done the dead load calculation only for uh, a bearer, intermediate bearer. And this week, we will do quite similar calculation, but in addition, we will do the life load as well. Okay, and this example, we have this uh, shed. This shed is a gable shed and this shed is consisting of frame okay this frame is repeated each five meters and on top of this frame we have buildings in this direction the red ones these are buildings Okay, on top of the Berlin, we have the roof sheeting on top here in green. So all this area will be covering with a roof sheeting. Okay, the span of the shed, the total span of the shed is 16 meters. Okay. And the span of the, uh, the Berlin is five meter, which is the spacing of the rafter. And the requirement of this example is to calculate the dead load G, life load Q for internal Berlins. Please assume reasonable values for ungiven information that you may require. So some of the information are not given to us, so we may have to assume it, okay? What is meant by internal Berlin? Internal Berlin is any Berlin inside, like this one, for example. Okay, or any of those. So this is our internal Berlin. So we need to find the load on this Berlin, for example. Did load and live load. Okay. Do you have any question up to now, guys? So now we need to start. So what is the weights you expect did load on the Berlin? The Berlin will carry its own weight. So this is the Berlin. So it will carry its own weight or self weight. And on top of the Berlin, we have the roof heating. So what is the component of did load on the Berlin? First component is roof sheeting. Second component or uh, is the self weight of the Berlin. So this is our Berlin. And this is the two component of dead loot. Okay. So we have weight of roof sheeting and self weight of the Berlin. Okay. Before we proceed, I want to show you uh, this video. This, this video is for Berlin installation to understand what is the Berlin's and how it is installed on site. So I will open this video. And this is a four minute video, so please watch this video.
Okay, guys, so this was a Berlin video or a video showing the installation of Berlin for a similar shed. So if we return back to our uh, example. So again, what is the dead load on Berlin's? Dead load on Berlin's is one, the weight of roof sheeting. Two, is the self weight of Berlin. Okay. But if we look at the information we are given, so we only have the Berlin, but we don't know how far, how far the, the Berlin are. So we need to know then is basin X. Can you hear me guys? Sorry, uh, there is a problem with the connection. Can you hear me? Can you confirm me or hearing me? Okay, thank you. So X is the Berlin is basing. This one, this information is not given to us, so we need to know how far the Berlins are. So to know the roof sheeting weight and the self weight of Berlin, we need to know first how the Berlin uh far. Okay. So we will go to the next slide. And before we move to the next slide, there are two types of roofs you may face or you may see in industry. So we might have gable slope roof. Gable slope roof means we have two slopes of the roof like that. This roof is called gable roof, similar to this one here. So this is our frame and this is the gable roof. So we have two inclination of two slopes. For the single roof, single roof similar to that. So this will be our shed. So how many slopes? Only one slope. So this is called single slope roof or hip roof as well. So we have single slope roof and gable slope roof. In our problem, we have the gable roof. So this roof is called gable okay here we need to we'll just add the uh, explanation in a different slide here we need to find how far the spacing r or how much is the distance x so this is the berlin is basing Okay, to know this, we will just explain here. So we need to, if we work, we look at this example. So the total span of this frame is 16 meters. This is the total span. Sixteen meter, but because it is symmetric, so we can only study eight meter of the of the girder or of the roof. Okay, so if we look here, the Berlin will be somehow like that. And so on. So we don't work on this part. Just leave this part away. So we are working on this one, okay? So those are, those black ones are Berlin. The distance between the Berlin is called, we give it the symbol X. So X, we call it as internal Berlin spacing. This internal Berlin spacing will be in the range from 1.2 meter to 2 meter. This is like from practice or a practical range of Berlin is basic. Okay. At the edges, we will reduce this range to, to be 0.75x. So we have another term, it's called 0.75x or external 
Berlin is basing. The external Berlin is basing based on this calculation, 0.75 times 0.2 and times point and times two meter will be between almost one meter to 1.5 meter. How is the external spacing is less than the internal spacing? Why we assume the external spacing less than the internal spacing? Because later when we calculate the wind load, we will find that the wind load are more intense here. So wind load here is more intense in the edge on the edges. So if you look at the wind loads on the roof, so we have we have here high wind high wind and in the middle we have low wind so that's why on the edges we need to reduce or make the berlin are closer so reduce the berlin spacing so that's why we have to reduce the berlin spacing at the edges okay so if we look at this we need to find to find the Berlin spacing. We need to find x. So if we continue in the next slide, okay. So we have if we have again the Berlin's one, two, three, four, five, six. This total is eight meter for in our example. Yes, Nazi. All the time, the Berlin is basing external. Internal is X. And external is 0.75X. Okay. Just to uh, account for the intensity of wind. So if we look here, this distance, this 8 meter will be X, X, X. And on the edges, we have 0.75X and 0.75x. So if we want to find x, how can we find x? We will just equalize this five distance equal to eight meter. So eight meter should be equal to 0.75x plus x plus x plus x plus 0.75x. So these three are the internal spacings and these two are two external spacing, right? So if we finalize this calculation, so eight meter will equal to will be equal to four point five x. So x will be eight meter over four point five will be equal to point seven eight meter. So how much the internal distance here in this example? If you Follow, follow, follow on me if you're still following me. Yeah, 1.78. This is our internal Berlin spacing. And how much will be the external spacing if this 0.178? So, how much is this? This will be 0.75 times 1.78. So, it will be 1.33 meter. Thank you, Snazi. So, this will be. The internal is basing, the external is basing 1.75x will be 1.33 meter. So if we want to finalize that, we can draw it here. So this is our, our roof. And this is our buildings. So here, 1.33 meter, 1.78 meter, 1.78 meter, 1.78 meter, 1.78 meter. Sorry, the last one is edge.
after it sometimes takes time to interpret with my movement. Okay, so the last one is 1.33 meter here. Okay, so now this is the spacing of Berlin. Why does uh, Because here, again, this is basing and this is basing are, if you look at the frame, so this is our frame. I just cut it. So this is our balance. Okay, so this Berlin is basing and this Berlin is basing are external Berlin is basing, which should be 0.75x. Okay, here the middle ones, this three spacing are internal spacing. So the internal spacing is X. From our calculation, we found X 0 0.785, 0 0.178 meter, and we found the external spacing is equal to 1.33 meter. That's why we start with 1.33 and then 1.78, 1.78, 1.78, and then 1.33, okay? Yes, because all the time, external spacing will be multiplied by 1.75. Yeah, to account for when the loads, that's correct. Okay, so if we return back to the example itself, as you can see here, X should be range of 1.2 to 2 meter. And we will assume that we have three internal spacing of 3X, two end spacing or two external spacing with 0.75X. So we will have 3X plus, we have three X's internal again, and we have two externals, okay? So this one, this three internal, and this are two external. So the final value will be eight meter over 4.5, give us the external as 1.78, and the, inter the sorry, this is the internal, and the external will be 1.75 from the value, so it will be 1.33. Okay, do you understand how to uh, assume the Berlin's uh, spacing? But I have a question for you. Is it all the time we need to um, uh, like assume three internal spacing and two external spacing or it can be changed? Do you have any idea about that? Yes, it can be changed. So how can we assume it? How can we assume the number of spacing? Any anyone have idea about? We will be given only the span of the building or the width of the building. For example, if we have half of the structure is twelve meter. I just will do this example. So how can we? Assume the number of Berlins. Not all the time. When we can use half of half of the band, because I can I will do another different example because this also may be a problem. 
okay when we use half of the building if the building is symmetric or if it is gable but if we have a building of single is single uh, slope like that and this is our width of the building 12 meter so do we take half of the building or the whole length of the the whole width of the building here because there is no symmetric symmetry so we will use the total uh, span or 12 meter okay we will how we assume number of building we can use like initial number of building or initial number of spacing by dividing the span of the building over 1.5 meter so how much the span is 12 meter over 1.5 so it will be eight. Eight is basing. So we will need eight is basing. So if we, if I draw this here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if you look here, the number of purlins and the number of spacing was increased because the width increased. Okay, why I use 1.5? Because 1.5 is the average value of Berlin spacing. Like I, I just pick a number in the middle to get a, a, a roughly number of spacing. Okay, so if we add this here, can you explain to me how much is the distance? Oh, or what is the which one is internal which one is external so we have this x x x x x x and on the edges we have 0.75 x and 0.75 x so if we want to do this calculation so we have 12 meter equal to how many external spacing two times 1.75 x Plus how many how many internal is basing? One, two, three, four, five, six. So six X. Okay. Thank you, Nazia, and thank you, Harmander, for participation in the, in the answer. So we will have twelve meter equal to seven point five X. So X will be twelve over seven point five. So it will be 1.6 meter. So X in this case, 1.6 meter. So how much is the external spacing is? The external spacing will be 0.75 X, 0.75 from 1.6 equal to 1.2. 1.2 meter, 1.2 meter. Okay, do you understand what I have done? This is just another example to show you that we may have different uh, spacing number based on the dimension of the building. Not all the time we have to assume it like that. Okay. Do you have any question, guys? Do you have any question? Yeah, just random, but this not like not random means that it's just uh, picking any number. So what is the range of X? X should be between 1.2 to 1.22, for example, from 1.2 meter to 2 meter. Okay, so you can assume X initially as, for example, 1.75 or 1.5, whatever the number you want to find the initial number of its basing. Using this initial number of spacing, you can assume the number of spacing and get the corresponding x. Okay. Yeah, this is not assumption. One point two to two meter is not an assumption. This is the like here. If you return back to here, this range is based on the availability of cheating on on the market. 
and also based on experience. So from the experience of designer engineer, so they give this, us this range. In this range, the Berlin uh, will be safe and economic. So if you increase the, sp the spacing more than two meters, this will be uh, the, the, the section required will be bigger. And if you use less than 1.2 or less than one, so you will need many mini, mini Berlins. Okay, so this just arrange to assume the Berlin, uh, the Berlin's uh, spacing. Okay, so that's it for the Berlin spacing. If we turn back to this drawing here, what we are putting on top of that. On top of Berlin, what is what is on top of Berlin? Sheeting. So the sheeting or the roof sheeting are supported by the Berlin. But we don't have information about the sheeting. So we need to assume the sheeting. So if we add slide here. So if you look at the Berlin's and the sheeting, what is this distance is? This distance is X or the internal is basic. Okay, the sheeting will be on top of that here. So what is what do you think is the relation between sheeting and Berlin spacing? Because the sheeting is sold as strips. The strip has widths. So for example, if you have Berlin, two Berlin like that, and you found you put a, a, a sheeting like that. Does this work? If the width of the strip is less than the Berlin is basing, so it will not work. But if it is larger, so it's okay. So we are looking for sheeting because the sheeting will be supported on the two Berlin. So that's why we need to select the sheeting based on the Berlin is basic. Okay. Yes, this will cause extra load on the Berlin. So if we go to the table, so the next stage is to find a roof sheeting. We will use this manual or this uh, detailing manual from Lyset. So Lyset is the provider of that roof sheeting. So what we have from our calculation, in our calculation we have external spacing and internal spacing. In our calculation, how much was the external spacing? 1.33 meter and internal was 1.78 meter so we will go to the table of sheeting uh, it's internal and external space okay so if you look here the first one custom orb the internal is 1200 how much our our internal is basing 1780 millimeter so does this one fit can you hear me guys okay just checking if you are hearing me okay so this one for example if we return back to our example this is our Berlin is basing 17 80 millimeter the internal is basing the minimum internal is basing or sorry the maximum internal is basing from the sheeting table is 1200 millimeter so if you put the sheeting like that it will, it will not reach the other berlin so this doesn't work so when we go to the table we are looking for internal is basing from the table larger than what we have so we are looking for end spacing and internal is basing larger than what we have okay otherwise it will not fit with our Berlin is basing so if we look at the first one 
1200 is less than our Berlin spacing. 1700 is still less than our Berlin spacing. 1800 is okay. 1600 compared to 1330, so okay. 2600 is okay. This one is 1350, so it doesn't fit. This one is 1900, it's okay. This one is 2400 is okay. So you can choose any one of those uh, with the correct mark and you cannot choose the types of the cross mark, okay? There is another page of the table in the next stage. Again here. Or more than 1780, okay? And here we have 3000. We have 2800, we have 3050, 1900, 2600. But this one, the internal fit, but the external, if you look at the external, we are looking for something more than 1333. So this one doesn't fit as well. So which all of the uh, correct mark is uh, fit, fit with us, but all the cross mark doesn't fit with us. So in this example, we select this span rib type. So the thickness of this span rib type is 0.42. BMT is the thickness, which is base metal thickness. So this is the abbreviation of base uh, metal thickness. What is the weight? the mass of this uh, sheeting 4.6 because we need the mass to calculate the dead load on Berlin. Okay. Do you have any question guys for that? So if we summarize what we have done. Here, as we select span, rib, sheeting, the thickness of this sheeting BMT is 0.42 millimeter. The mass of this sheeting is 4.6 kilogram per meter squared. Okay. Do you have any question, guys, for that, about that? Okay. So what is the next step to calculate the weight? So now we selected the Berlin, the space uh, sheeting, the span rib uh, sheeting, and we know the weight of this span rib sheeting is 4.6 kilogram per square meter. The next step is to calculate the dead load G of roof sheeting on Berlin. So we need to find how much of the roof sheeting will be transferred to the Berlin. How can we calculate this load? First of all, we have G. We need to find G of roof sheeting. as a, a weight, not as mass. So we need to convert it to kilonewton per square meter. What is the unit we have? We have 4.6 kilogram per square meter. How to convert from kilogram to kilonewton? Do you know? To convert from kilogram to kilonewton, we first need to convert to newton. So from kilogram to Newton, you need to multiply by 9.81 meter per second square. To convert from Newton to kilonewton, you need to divide by 1000. Okay, so if we do this here, to convert from kilogram to kilonewton, you need to multiply by 9.81 over 1000. Okay. Do you have any problem with that? Okay, so again, G 
roof sheeting in kilonewton per square meter will be equal to the mass 4.6 kilogram per square meter and you need to be consistent with the units because the unit has weight in the uh, marking. So we have 4.6 times 9.81 divided by 1,000. This to convert to Newton, this to convert to kilonewton. The final value will be 4.6 times 9.8 will give us a value of 0 0.045 kilonewton per squared meter. So this is our first step of the calculation here to find the G roof sheeting as kilonewton per square meter. The next step is we need to find the load on the Berlin. Load on the Berlin, internal Berlin as kilonewton per meter or uniform distributed load over a line. Okay. What does this mean? This means that if we have, this is our plan. So we have some Berlins. And this black is black line is the rafter, and this is a cut of the structure here. So if we have this rafter, and this is a rafter, do you know what is the distance between these two rafter? Five meter. Okay. If we go back to the first slide. How much is the distance between the each rafter? Five meter. This is the is the span of the building. So five meter is the Berlin span. I'll write down here. Berlin span. What is this verbal elements? These verbal elements are the Berlins. What is the spacing of the Berlins? If you can remember this, if this edge, so this 1.33 meter, 1.78, 1.78, and 1.78, and we have another edge 1.33 meter. So using the area method, any Berlin inside here, internal one, because we are asked to design an internal beam, an internal Berlin, sorry. So each Berlin will carry half, 1.78 by 2 from right, 1.78 by 2 from left. So how much the width of this area covered, supported by uh, one Berlin? Do you know? What is the width of this one? If it is 1.78, half uh, over two from left, 1.78 half from right. So the total width will be 1.78 meter. We call this is the load width of the Berlin. So in general, what will be the load width of the Berlin? What is 1.78? It is the internal spacing of the Berlin which equal to, in this example, as 1.78 meter. So this is how to get the Berlin, uh, the Berlin load width, or how much the Berlin will take from the sheeting. Okay, now, how to get the G roof sheeting to the Berlin? So G roof sheeting, To the Berlin will be G roof sheeting we just calculate earlier, which was how much? 0 0.045 kilonewton per square meter time the load width of the Berlin 
which is 1.78 meter. So G roof sheeting is equal to 0 0.4 0 0.045 times 1.78. This in kilonewton by meter square and this meter. So what is the final value will be? Meter will be omitted with the square. So G roof sheeting to the Berlin will be point eight one kilonewton per meter. This is the important thing we need to know. The unit is kilonewton per meter, not kilonewton per square meter. The value is point eight one. Do you have any question, guys, for that? Okay, this is the answer here from the slides. I just make uh, a different order of steps. So we can uh, first convert this to kilo Newton per meter squared first, and then multiply by the load width to find the roof sheeting. Okay, so first step, convert kilogram per square meter to kilonewton per square meter. Then second step, get the forces, get dead load in kilonewton per, per meter by multiplying kilonewton per square meter times meter. Okay, or multiply the G roof sheeting times the load width. Okay, do you have any question, guys, about that? Okay, if we jump to the next step, which is the own weight of the sheeting, in, in uh, sorry, the own weight of the Berlins, we don't know what is the Berlin cross section, it is not given to us. That's why we are required to assume a temporary cross section for, for the Berlin, and we will. The, 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 you don't have to design it in this course, but if you are doing uh, an advanced courses, you might uh, design the Berlin. So in this example, we select C219 as our Berlin. So the Berlin name or the Berlin uh, numbering is C, means we have C channel. Or C section. The height of the Berlin is 200. So the three first digit is the height, and 19 is the thickness. But thickness multiplied by 10. So how much is the thickness of this Berlin? The thickness of this Berlin is very small and it is 1.9 millimeter. So the height is 200 and the thickness is 1.9 millimeter. Okay, so the next step is to find the weight of the Berlin. So using also Lysat tables for Berlins, if we go to the Berlins tables, what Berlin we select? 219. So what is the mass? The mass is 4.74. So G Berlin is given to us as 5.74 kilogram per meter from Lysat table or the provider table. Okay, so this again is kilogram per meter. How to convert kilogram per meter to kilonewton per meter? So 5.74 kilogram per meter times 9.81 over a thousand. This to convert to newton, this to convert to kilonewton. So the final load is 0.56 kilonewton per meter. So this is the final load on the Berlin. So this is the self weight of the Berlin or G Berlin. So this is self weight of the Berlin. Okay. So we have self weight of the Berlin. And what is the next step? The next step is the G total or total dead load 
what is the total dead load will be? G self weight of Berlin. So total dead load or G total is self weight of Berlin plus G proof cheating. So this is the final dead load. So G total is equal to 0 0.056 kilonewton meter from the previous step plus 0 0.081 kilonewton per meter from the earlier step. So the final G total will be 0.136 kilonewton per meter. So this is the first part of the requirement. How much is the total dead load on the Berlin? So this is G total. Do you have any question with the dead load on the Berlin? So all the time, the, the dead load calculation is more uh, more complicated or have more uh, effort, will take more effort and more time because we have a lot of component. But for the life load, because it is directly from the standard, so it will not take that much time. So if we look here for the life load, the life load will be obtained from the standard AS 1170.1 here from table 3.2. Why table 3.2? Because table 3.2 for the roof action. We are designing roof. That's why we are looking for roof. Which roof we have? We have other roof because this roof is not street owings and it is in accessible roof. Because it is not accessible roof, so the life load is minimum life load. Because just for somebody like for maintenance or removing the water, uh, rainwater and so on. So from this uh, table, we will find that for other roof, under structure element, the equation we have is this equation or this case. But we mainly looking for this because this one is the uniform distributed load. What is this uh, equation is? This equation is the life load Q equal to 1.8 over A plus 1.2 and should be greater than, greater than or equal 0.25 kBA. Okay. No problem with 1.8 and 0.12, uh, but what is A? A is a tributary area of the element or of the designed element. What is the element we are designing now? Berlin. So if we look at the Berlin again, the drawing I just drew in earlier. Uh, slide if this our rafters so this are our berlins how much is this distance are 1.78 1.78 1.78 1.78 how much is this distance is five meter this purple ones are the Berlins again. What is A? A, as we mentioned earlier, is the area carried by each rafter. For example, if we are studying this rafter, so the area will be this red area. This is our tributary area for the Berlin. What is the dimension of this tributary area? This dimension is 1.78. The other dimension is five meter. So A in this case will be 1.75 times five. This is the area supported by a Berlin. Okay. Do you have any problem with that? So if we substitute here, what will be Q? Q will be one 
1.8 over 1.78 times 5 plus 1.12. This value is 0 0.32 in KBA. KBA is equivalent to kilonewton per squared meter. So this is KBA. So first of all, we need to check Q is more than 0.25 KBA. So 0.32 more than 0.25. So it is okay. Our life load in this case will be 0.32 KBA. What is the next step? Is the next step is is we need to find Q on the Berlin. Q in the Berlin means we need to convert the load to kilonewton per meter. How to convert from kilonewton per square meter or KBA to kilonewton per meter? We need to multiply this again by the load width, similar to what happened in the sheeting. So to find the load width, the to find the the life load on the Berlin, we need to multiply the life load times the load width. How much is the load width of the Berlin? The load width of the Berlin is 1.78 meter. So Q Berlin will be 0.32 times 1.78, this in meter, this in, in kilonewton per squared meter. So for the units, meter will be omitted with the square. So we will have 0.57 kilonewton per meter. Okay, so this is our life load on the Berlin. So now after we complete all of that, I'll just show you first the calculation here. So this is our calculation on the slide. We have the formula from AS 1170.1. So you have to use this formula. A is the area supported by a Berlin or the tributary area of the Berlin. So again, the area is this hatched one. So the width is 1.78 meter. The length is five meter. So this is the area. So we will find Q as 0 0.32 KBA, which is greater than 0 0.25 KBA. So it's okay. Now, the next step is to multiply the uh, life load uh, Q times the load width 0.78. So you find the life load on, uh, on the Berlin. The last thing I will show you is what we will do after that in the next steps. So now, after our calculation, if this is our Berlin, the support of the Berlin is the rafter. So this is our Berlin and these two rafters. What is the span of the Berlin or what is the distance between the rafter? Five meter. What is the component or the load component we got from our calculation two? The first load component was G or G total or dead load equal to how much is the dead load was? 0.136 kilonewton per meter. The second component is the life load. So the second component is the life load Q on the Berlin equal to 1.57 kilonewton per meter. So this is the life load. Okay, so how many components we have here? Two. Dead load, this is the first component. Second is life load, okay? In the next classes, we will, what we will do is we will need to sum this together using something called load combinations.
according to the standard 1170.0. So we will have G and Q. We have, because we have to like account for different cases of loading. So we might have load case like 1.2 G plus 1.2 1.5 Q. So what we are doing here is just increasing the dead load a little bit and increasing the life load more because dead load is loads that not moving so it is less uh, critical life load that any load that is moving on the structure so it is more critical okay so we are calculating all this loads to be ready for the next step which is the load combination according to the standard okay and uh, that's it for today do you have any question guys nazia and calvin thank you nazia uh, i hope you have understand what is what have what we have explained today and if you have any questions just let me know guys by email or you can post it on the forum on the course website thank you Nadia. okay guys i will uh i will end yeah this will be uploaded i will upload it to the thank you Calvin. i will upload it and also upload the substructure lecture as soon as possible maybe this evening or this afternoon okay thank you so much see ya bye